Hello, boys and girls. Thanks for joining us again for our Children's Church video time. Uh, as we get ready uh, for our lesson today, I want to make sure that you guys know we're going to give a special announcement at the very end of this video. So make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end and hear that special announcement. Today we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 6, verse number 13. So if you would turn in your Bibles to Romans 6, verse 13, and we'll be there in just a moment. As we are turning in our Bibles to Romans 6:13, I want to show you a couple of items that I have here uh, before me. Right here, I've got a hammer. Very simple thing. Uh, maybe you've used a hammer. I'm sure you probably have a hammer at home. What are hammers used for? They're used for knocking nails into wood. You might use them to uh, maybe knock out a wall or maybe threaten your brother or sister uh, with it. But you probably have a hammer at home. That's a very useful tool. Right here we have a kitchen utensil. This utensil is called a ladle and you probably have one of these at home uh, as well. Use it to scoop up soups or sauces and stuff like that. We got our ladle here. Right here we have something else that probably some of you have used or have seen uh, people use and this is a paintbrush. Nice little freshly cleaned uh, paintbrush right there. Right here, here's something that uh, maybe you don't know exactly what this is. This is a cheese cutter. I know what you're thinking. Pastor Paul, I can cut the cheese all by myself. Why do, why do I need a cheese cutter? Well, some people use a cheese cutter uh, because they like to get very even slices off of big blocks of cheese. We've got a cheese cutter right here. Now, right here, you might have uh, seen this before. We have a croquet uh, mallet, and uh, it may look like a very big hammer. And uh, you could probably use that to knock some nails into to wood. Uh, but it's used to play a game outside. Maybe you've seen that game uh, being played. Right here, we have another utensil that's used often in the kitchen. We got a knife. Very, uh, very dangerous to play with these. So don't go into your kitchen and uh, grab one of these and start running around the house with it. And then lastly, we have a softball bat. And this softball bat uh, has been here at the church, at the school for a long time. Uh, you can see a lot of wear and tear on it, but we got a softball bat. Now, as we think of these different items, all these items, these different tools, these different utensils, they're all used for something different. You're not going to want to use your hammer to dish out the soup that you're going to be eating uh, later on. Uh, you don't want to use a cheese cutter to try to paint your wall. But one thing is sure, all these items have something in common. And we're going to show you here on the camera what these uh, items have in common. What do you think all these items have in common? Well, they're all used for something, that's right. But all of these items, they all have a handle. Each item has a handle. And that handle makes the item, makes the tool, makes the utensil useful. Now you're there in Romans chapter 6, verse number 13. The verse says, neither yield, that word yield means to, uh, to give, uh, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now by reading that verse, it seems to me that we have a choice on how we are used as people. Now, you know, these instruments here, they may all have a handle. They can all be used for different things. But one thing's for sure, these instruments, these tools, they don't have a choice of how they are used. Could you imagine if your dad got his hammer out, went to maybe put a nail into a wall so you could hang a picture uh, in your living room or something? And as he went to hit the nail on the head with his hammer, the hammer stopped him and said, hey, 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 hey. I'm tired of hitting my face on these nails. I'm not doing that today. You can just put me down. I, I need to rest. I'm sure your dad would probably think, wow, I need to get a little bit more rest because my tools are starting to talk to me now. Or what if your mom was in the kitchen and she was getting ready to dish out some soup for the meal or pour some spaghetti sauce over uh, your spaghetti and the ladle screamed at her, no, 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 it's too hot in there. Don't put me in there. Your mom would probably throw the ladle uh, out of the room, run out of the kitchen screaming and scared half to death. So these instruments, they don't have a choice, but we do. We have a choice of how 
if we are used. And that vo- that verse, uh, Romans 6, 13, it gives us the two choices that we have. We can choose to be instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, or we can be instruments that are uh, righteousness unto God. Now, as a Christian, if you are a Christian and you know Christ as your Savior, you should desire to be used of God. You shouldn't want to be an instrument or a tool of sin. You should want to be used by God. Now, how can we do that? Well, some simple things that we can do are things like every morning when we get up, praying and asking God that he would allow us to be an instrument in his hands. You know, these different tools... Let's take this paintbrush, for instance. This paintbrush is not going to paint anything beautiful on its own. It's just going to sit there. But if that paintbrush is put into the right hands, this paintbrush could paint a beautiful picture, uh, paint a room, a beautiful color. Same thing with a hammer. If you took a hammer and gave it to a skilled uh, builder, he could use that hammer to build some really incredible things. And we, as Christians, we should allow ourselves to be put into God's hands so that he can use us for what he desires us to do. That's what it means to be an instrument of righteousness unto God. So get up every morning, pray and ask God and tell him that you desire to be an instrument being used by his hands. When you do that, you're going to be given different opportunities throughout the day. Different opportunities where you may be tempted to sin or you can choose to do uh, what is right. And so... Think about the next time your parents ask you if you cleaned your room. At that point in time, you are given a decision. You can choose to tell them a lie or you can tell them the truth. If you've asked God to make you an instrument of of righteousness, you have to listen. You have to listen to that still small voice telling you that you need to tell the truth, even if uh, maybe it's going to bring some consequences. Then you have to obey. You need to obey your parents. Obey God. Obey His Word so that you can be an instrument of righteousness unto God. Well, thank you for being with us today for our Children's Church time. We told you that at the end of this video, we're going to give a special announcement. Here is that announcement. Next week, we're going to start something new with our Children's Church uh, video times here on YouTube. And we're going to be having our Bible trivia game show. And we're going to be having those each Sunday after the live stream service on Sunday mornings we're going to put out our Bible trivia game shows. And so here's what you need, okay? Next week, you need to make sure that you have your Bible. You're going to need your Bible. You can't use your your computer or something like that to look up answers. But you need your Bible. You need an adult, and that adult needs to have a phone with them, okay? And then uh, you also need to make sure that you're watching the live stream uh, next Sunday with Pastor Goforth. And the way that it will work is uh, when Pastor Goforth finishes, you guys probably know that Pastor Tim does his live stream for his Sunday school. When Pastor Tim's Sunday school live stream is finished, we will upload the video to YouTube and it will be open for you to view. Now, we will explain the rules uh, for our game show, but I would encourage you get your parents Get the whole family involved because you can use each other for uh, resources, but you cannot use uh, the Internet or anything like that. You can also use your Bible. So we're excited about that. We're going to have some prizes for uh, the different winners uh, each week. And so make sure that you are uh, ready for that next week. We're excited. going to make a little bit of a change and hopefully make it a little bit more exciting for you guys there at home as we study God's Word. So look forward to that next week. And make sure you're ready for our Bible trivia game show. We'll see you guys later.